what is the remote ID? The remote ID is um, something that basically is happening right now in the United States and is the attempt of the FAA, Federal Aviation Agency, to enforce so that all the unmanned aviation vehicles, so drones, airplanes, uh, FPV, no FPV, everything that flies autonomously, including even, let's be honest, toys, to broadcast certain data using the radio frequencies, public radio frequency. Based on the basic specification, each of those devices has to broadcast the pilot ID, device ID, has to broadcast time, has to broadcast the position, course, altitude, it has to broadcast since takeoff until landing, and plus some additional elements here and there. Uh, to how the authorities say it, increase safety and then everything is great fantastic because when we have this thing everybody will be safe no harm will be done and uh, bad people will not use drones to do malicious things okie dokie because this is happening on the public frequencies there can be there are applications that you can flash on your you can install on your smartphone and because this is wi-fi wi-fi beacon mode uh, then you will be able to pick everybody who's flying around you with your smartphone so you know uh, what's going on and who's flying and where it's flying and Nothing bad will happen because airplanes will not hit drones anymore. Let's try to think on why the remote ID in, the, in this configuration, in this setup, actually makes absolutely no bloody sense. How it's implemented, how it's designed, and how it's supposed to broadcast the, the data that is supposed to be in the beacon uh, makes it basically unusable. Because the, the biggest difference between those huge transponders uh, used on the aeroplanes and boats and everywhere, meant aeroplanes and boats and everywhere, and those teeny tiny remote ID beacons, pseudo beacons, is the problem of wrench. The wrench of such a device, in theory, if you look at the specification of how much of the wrench the Wi-Fi beacon uh, technology offers you, they say it's three to five times the range of the standard network. Practical maximum uh, range of the remote ID to something like 500 meters. How much time do you have as the pilot of the manned aircraft when you can assuming of course that you have the hardware that is capable of detecting the drones uh, in the close proximity uh, if you get the information that there's a drone 500 meters from you how much of the time and the possibility to do any kind of react to actually implement in flight the answer is absolutely bloody zero nobody is really talking about uh, who will be detecting this thing how how to gather data what will be if there will be a central system to live track uh, the all the drones in the uh, in the in the everywhere basically everywhere in the united states to be able to protect yourself from the drones wanting to do something bad and if there is not such a system then please explain me how the fact that the drone is transmitting the remote id uh, will actually increase the safety of everything anything the only scenarios I can really like uh, think of are the scenarios when the uh, DJI pilots will be detected when they will try to make photos in the places when they do not are not supposed to make any photos and record videos. So the only way that the remote ID actually can impact and increase the safety to some extent is when the pilot is using the off the shelf a DJI a commercial drone. I actually can can imagine how the remote ID can help to improve some kind of the safety, uh, like smuggling uh, drugs and weapons into the places when they should not be, like the prisons, military bases, okay, using DJI, this is very important, uh, drones for bombing attempts of something here and there. Okay, I get it, I get it. But what the... RFID uh, specification, uh, not RFID, remote, the remote ID specification and the whole attempt is, uh, is not really solving in terms of making this a success is that it's not really guaranteed, guaranteeing anything like that for everybody else. There are 
mm, two categories. Like when you have the commercial drone both, then it has to have the remote ID. You cannot take off without the remote ID. It has to run the self-test of everything and like check everything. And you have to land when the remote ID is down. So it's fully automated. It just works. It just transmits your position to into the into the air. On the other hand, we have the DJI lock, so it's not really that it's not really there. And and such. But FAA decided to go one step further and also enforce usage of the remote ID module transmitters on the ready-made, not the ready-made, on the customer-made drones. So if you did any kind of the assembly of the of the drone or the airplane, you have to put the remote ID transmitter on your thing. What this part kind of forgets to mention is that um, you cannot expect that a person that wants to do something bad with the drone will actually install the remote ID module. There is no way for anyone to block possibility to arm and fly and uh, perform every single function over there uh, without this thing uh, inserted, running, operational, configured and up the way. If there is a smuggler, a mob, a criminal or anyone, a terrorist, he will want to use the drone to bring havoc on anything just look look basically what's happening in the ukraine there is not a single chance and he will install the remote id transmitter on this drone <laughs> no it will absolutely not happen there's not not a chance and because the faa cannot prohibit the takeoff of such a drone without the remote id module it's basically becoming absolutely useless it will not increase the safety in this case of anyone everywhere the only like case of that somebody will this thing will be like in use is uh, because somebody is flying in the park and uh, Karen uh, ah, you are flying, you should not be flying and calls the police. If you include uh, the fact of the extremely limited range uh, to maximal practical, practical range is like 500 meters, 500 yards, a uh, quarter of a mile something like that but most probably the practical range is closer to 100 meters so 100 yards or tenth of the mile less than a tenth of the mile then well this thing ain't gonna work because if you will be able to detect this thing with your smartphone app or your smartphone then you also see the guide who's flying so why the hell to use this thing at all just makes absolutely no bloody sense of course we don't know how the FAA measures the success if they think that that success will be the lack of incidents well they of course they will succeed because there was no harm done by the hobby fpv pilots so far anywhere anywhere so so you know that that's why the remote id as the way to increase the safety will absolutely fail and will not reach this uh, this goal another aspect of the remote id that um, i don't think that a lot of people are really talking about if you make a law and if you want to enforce the law you have to be able to enforce the law that means that you have to have means to enforce it and faa has no means to enforce it the chances of you being caught flying without the remote id somewhere when there is not that much of the people around are basically exactly zero not a single chance that you will be caught because guess what police doesn't give a shit about people flying FPV as long as they are not really doing something that's dangerous and can endanger anyone. Of course, the Karen can uh, call the police. This thing always can happen and like Karen's everywhere. On the other hand, uh, you probably should not fly around Karen's. You should have built in the Karen detector. So it turns out that the current is the real problem, not the police and not the, the remote IT. In my career, <laughs> career like uh, personal flying, uh, I met police uh, while flying twice, every single time where they were kind of interested in this thing. Oh, what you doing? Oh, today we are flying too because we are learning to fly our big, uh, big matrice and, and, and so on and so on and so on. Believe it or not, 
but uh, police has the priority queue. And if you think that Karen calling the police saying that the guy is flying a drone will get the priority response and like the whole squad, uh, squad, squad car will immediately uh, move in your direction. No, they, they have more interesting stuff to do than uh, chasing drone pilots. Of course, as long as you're not posing any threat to anyone. FAA has not enough of the resources to enforce it. Period. People who don't want to put the remote ID will not put the remote ID and most probably none of those will ever get into any kind of the consequences. That's that's just the reality. There is uh, a few things that people also should be aware when flying without the remote ID. When you had some kind of the insurance uh, and you crashed, hit someone, uh, caused some damage, uh, cost some damage that in theory is covered by your insurance like i don't know cinematic flying on the film set like do something like insurance here and there you know those big cine lifters uh, are kind of expensive things and you kind of do want to have this thing insured every insurance in the world has a somewhere in your contract that they do not cover cases when you broke the law and because you are flying without the remote id you are breaking the law and uh, you will not be paid uh, from the insurance you have. But on the other hand, this is exactly the same situation if you are, for example, uh, flying using the uh, radio link that does not have the FCC approval in the United States. One of the points uh, from the whole FAA remote ID uh, endeavor is that operator must, must land as soon as practicable if RF remote ID stops broadcasting. But how the operator should know that remote ID stopped broadcasting? Operator has no idea if the remote ID is broadcasting. Operator might only know if the remote ID transmitter thinks that it is broadcasting. That's not really exactly the same. Another stupid assumption over there because uh, the remote ID module uh, cannot prohibit you. In most of the cases, uh, it will not even uh, like uh, tell you that um, it's not broadcasting. Because guess what? Even the remote ID module has no idea that it's not broadcasting. It only thinks that it's broadcasting and this is absolutely not, uh, not really the same. In my opinion, that's the situation with the remote ID mess that we have right now in the United States um, has some nice ideas behind it uh, from the technical point of view I think it's uh, actually kind of smart smart uh, because usage of the standard Wi-Fi uh, beacon functionality actually simplifies this thing it makes the manufacturing of the hardware much simpler than uh, than it might that might, you might think it is however the problem is that uh, in my opinion FCC will fail and FCC will not um, meet its biggest goal to in at, at least official goal to increase the safety in the air because it's not just not possible to increase the safety in the air with such a thing and uh, if anyone will ever like be saved thanks to this uh, think is only when this will be a DJI pilot uh, flying uh, in the stupid place when it sh he shouldn't or maybe like a police finding someone who's flying next to the La Guardia with his DJI drone but besides that it's the it's the solution it's not working solution to the problem that is not really that big as it is